So, you got some new Star Wars derivation for me? Yes, sir, I do. Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Scar Giver, huh? What's that about? It's Korra's nickname, our main character. Pretty intimidating, right? I mean, doesn't that kind of imply you will survive whatever she does to you? <laughs> yeah, so cool. Anyway, the bad guy she killed in the last movie, he's alive again. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And he's mad because he didn't want to get killed at all. Understandable. And so now he wants to attack the people of Velt and steal their grain. He still wants to do the thing from the last movie and the good guys still want to defend it. <laughs> yeah, like in the last movie. Movie. So why isn't this just one movie? Because it's two. So now Korra and the other warriors need to train the village people. The band? No, the people that live on this moon. The warriors have to train them. And who are the warriors again? Well, they're, uh... They're, you know, the why the ones from the last time. What are their names? Well, there's the... the uh, Okay, look, I don't know. Fair enough. And so another thing these good guys need to do is harvest all the grain. Wasn't the whole thing in the last movie that they don't have enough grain or people to harvest it or people to fight? Right, but this is the second movie and several days have passed. Got it. So then we're gonna get into it. Oh boy, the fighting? No, the farming. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be so slow, sir. It's gonna take so very long. Okay. We're talking a good 30, 40 minutes where every time we cut back to the good guys, they're just doing some slow-mo farming. It kind of seems like a long time. Well, sir, people open Netflix and they click on an action sci-fi movie. What do you think they expect? Sci-fi action? Wheat! That's right. Wheat. Slowly. Yeah. Oh, you sure about that? Yes. And what about the fight training? Oh, the villagers are just kind of instantly good at that part. Well, leaves more time for the farming, I guess. Now you're getting it. So now it's time for some character development. So Korra is going to tell her boyfriend Gunner about the time she shot a kid. What? Yes, yeah, he, her adopted father, Balsarius, staged a coup in the ship's furnace room. The spaceships are powered by coal. And it's all very dramatic. There's a little string quartet playing in the temple of their music is going to adapt to what's happening in the moment. Oh, hiring a band for your secret murder plot is tight. And Belisarius kills the royal family, but Korra is the one who shoots the magical princess child, and then Belisarius reveals he's framing her. Oh, very sneaky Belisarius. Yeah, but she manages to pull a gun on him. So she shoots him? No, she can't bring herself to shoot him. Killing's wrong, so she just kills some guards and escapes. Oh, okay. So then it's time for some backstory for the other warriors. Right, we're like halfway through the second movie, and I don't know any of these people. That's right, so we're just going to kind of get that out of the way rapid fire style because we don't have a lot of time here. Hey, maybe we do less slow-mo farming and more organic character development? Uh... No, we're gonna want the slow-mo farming. If you say so. For some reason, I absolutely do. So they're all just gonna kind of sit on one side of a long table, facing the same direction, and tell their stories one after the other. Bang, 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 bang. Well, okay then. So now that each of the characters have spoken about themselves for 120 seconds apiece, and therefore the audience cares about them, it's time for the final fight. Oh boy. So the bad guys show up, but the good guys have made a whole system of trenches, so they have the element of surprise. In just a couple of days, they harvested all their grain, trained everybody to fight and built an elaborate trench system? That's what we're going with. And all the women and children, they're hiding in a building surrounded by all the grain so the bad guys can't blow them up. This friggin' grain seems like more of a character than the women and children. It kind of is. So now the plan is for Korra and Gunner to sneak onto the enemy's Death Star. What's that? Dreadnought. That's not what you said. It is, though, it is. Well, it must be tough to sneak on a giant ship full of bad guys. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they fly Korra's old ship that she escaped on, so they blend in no problem. Oh, the bad guys don't have a system in place to check who's boarding the ship? Apparently not, so then it's time for some heroic action. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, Korra's gonna shoot a bunch of medics that were trying to help her. Very heroic. And then she's gonna rig the ship to blow up. Bam, bam. But meanwhile, the bad guys have found out that she's on the ship. So what do they do? Well, the bad guy's like, actually, Korra's the only thing that matters, so just blow up the grain and the women and children now. We just spent half the movie harvesting that in slow motion. Now it just doesn't matter. Correct. So now they want to find her on the ship so she can't escape back to the moon. Well, if they know she's on the ship, can't they just shut all their doors and fly away, knowing she'll be trapped on there? Hey, shut up. So then before the bad guy can fire his super slow weapon at the grain and the women and children, I guess, Korra's gonna blow the ship up. Very exciting. So she gets in a big old fight with the bad guy, and then she chops his head off. <laughs> Let's see him come back from that. <laughs> right? I mean, he might. I can do what I want. Right. But also, Gunner got hurt, so he dies. He's a dead guy now. Oh no! He was... He was in the movie. He was, yeah. So then Korra reveals to the other warriors that she's actually not a good person because of that time she shot a child. Yeah, right. But then this general guy is like, actually, I knew that about you, and she's not dead, so it's all good. He didn't want to reveal that to her earlier. No, he wanted her to keep suffering and hating herself for a little while longer. Kind of a jerk move. And so they're like, well, we gotta go find the princess, and with that sequel bait done, we're done. What do you think? Oh, you want to make more of these? Of course, sir. There's so much more slow-mo space farming potential. How much more slow-mo space farming could you possibly want to shoot. Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thank you for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you enjoyed it. And listen, I, I want to be transparent with you, all right?
All right, see you next time.